Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Have you ever asked yourself how large U.S. military ships are launched into the water? Depending on the size and the ship's class, shipbuilders choose from a variety of launching methods. The technique that best suits the type of watercraft being launched and the available facilities. The sideways launch is one of the common methods used by the U.S. Navy to float its new $600 million littoral combat ship. Initiated in 2002, the LCS is a fast, maneuverable, and resilient warship designed for operation in nearshore environments. The combatant ship can defeat asymmetric and anti-access threats, including high-speed boats, missile-firing fast attack craft, and small submarines. The LCS has an exceptional modular design, known as mission modules. The ship can be reconfigured to perform different roles. Notably anti-submarine warfare, mine countermeasures, anti-surface warfare, and special warfare missions. There are two classes of the LCS. The Freedom Class and the Independent Class. The Freedom Ship is a steel monohull design. It is 387.6 feet long. fifty seven point seven feet wide and has a fourteen point one foot draft. It can accommodate up to ninety eight sailors and weighs approximately thirty four hundred and fifty metric tons when fully loaded. The independence variant, however, is an aluminum trimaran design. It's 421.5 feet long, 31.6 feet wide, and has a 4.6 foot draft. The warship has roughly 3,200 metric tons of full load displacement. The two classes feature a combined diesel and gas turbine with steerable water jet propulsion. Generating massive speeds of 40 and 44 knots respectively. The LCS sports rolling airframe missiles, a counter boat missile system and a Mark 110 gun which fires 220 rounds per minute. The ship is launched sideways. The warship is placed side on to the water on a slipway. Oil and wax or steel rollers might be used to help with the smooth slide. The slipway extends into the water and the warship slides under its own power. Wow. 
Then, thanks to its great buoyancy and stability, it became steady and ready for the first mission. The NOAA ship Reuben Lasker, a research ship of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, was also launched sideways. The vessel was laid down at the Marinette Marine Corporation shipyard in Marinette, Wisconsin. One year later, on June 16, 2012, Pamela A. Lasker, daughter of the ship's namesake Reuben Lasker, christened the ship. A house operator presses the button of the slipway, letting Reuben Lasker fall into the Menominee River. The ship's entrance into the water is regulated by solid drag chains. Here, one can see an alternative method of launching ships through an airbag launching system. Emerged in 1981, this method uses marine airbags to propel ships into the water. The airbags are cylindrical with hemispherical heads at both ends. They are made of synthetic tire cord reinforcement and rubber layers, allowing greater bearing capacity. The airbags are first placed under the ship and then inflated. Then the ship slides down into the water safely without damaging itself. This innovative method is both cost-effective and environmentally friendly. However, it requires a large area. Shipyards like Ingalls Shipbuilding in Mississippi provide the U.S. Navy with unique landing platform docks, or LPDs. A Navy assault vessel that embarks, transports, and lands elements of a landing force for various expeditionary warfare missions. Before the construction begins, engineers design every single piece of the warship and inject fleet input into the development process so the platform can meet future requirements. The ship is enormous and impossible to build at once. Consequently, master shipbuilders start by welding and cutting thin steel plates into panels. These panels are then twisted and shaped into blocks of the ship's skeleton. There are 210 units in each LPD. And the pieces are built utilizing modular construction techniques so the ship can fulfill various warfare missions. Therefore, Cutting-edge technology and expert shipbuilders are combined to construct it. After years of construction, the 684 feet long platform is finally ready to launch using a floating out method. The warship is carried out by the dry dock on which it was built. Once the ship floats, Powerful tugboats pull it out carefully from the dock and release it to sea. In addition to military vessels, the U.S. Navy is relying on other advanced watercraft. Notably submarines to operate underwater. Submarines are made up of highly resistant materials. and sophisticated technology to fit the harsh environment where they are intended to operate. 
The manufacturing process involves the use of multiple materials and a series of complicated steps. Steel is the main material to build this nuclear submarine. It's utilized to construct the essential parts of the submarine, including the inner and outer hulls, as well as the ballast tanks. Copper, brass, aluminum, glass, and plastic are also used to create the ship's parts. The nuclear reactor, which represents the heart of the vessel, is fueled with highly enriched uranium, which provides unlimited endurance. Materials like germanium and silicon are used in electronic components. In Sweden, submarine manufacturer Saab Kakums is producing a new class of air-independent propulsion submarines in one of its factories. The company's expertise is based on more than 100 years of experience. During which it has delivered seven submarine classes across three continents. The company brings workers from different areas together in cross-functional teams to develop solutions for state-of-the-art vessels. Once the submarine has been entirely constructed and undergone all of its testing and sea trials, commissioning takes place. We are here today to celebrate the commissioning of USS Oregon, the fourth ship to bear the name of the Beaver State. The first USS Oregon was a brig. At the commissioning event, it is expected that the ship's sponsors are in attendance, as well as leading dignitaries, public officials, and the media. Submarines are usually launched using a floating out technique. When the ship is ready, the staff rolls it out carefully and places it on a floating dry dock. After all of the final checks are done, the staff opens up the valves to let water into the platform. The floating dry dock sinks underwater, lowering the submarine with her. When the weapon sets at the appropriate level, it moves out from the platform where tugboats wait to maneuver it for a sea trial. Before the delivery of the ships, the shipbuilder undergoes sea trials to test the watercraft's performance and seaworthiness. Here, the Virginia-class submarine Montana has just succeeded in its alpha trial. During this, the watercraft demonstrated its capabilities to fulfill its missions. Typically, the speed, maneuverability, equipment, and the submarine's ability to remain undetected are closely monitored. This is done to ensure the vessel meets strict requirements. Developments in technology and increased threats led the U.S. Navy to modernize its fleet. Thus, several warship classes are built with complex manufacturing processes. Identifying the appropriate launching method for each warship is crucial to ensure its safe deployment. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.